Beckham got kicked out of the club when his head was twisted by sponsorship deals, says Uncat, and he gave 10 times more than Rashford. If there's concrete proof, the club should deal with him in a similar manner. Well, the, well, the, well the, you know, this is the problem here. This is the problem here. You want, you want a hard line? You want a hard line? You want a hard line? I'll give you a hard line. If Jadon Sancho is late for training and goes on Twitter and says, Eric Ten Hag's wrong about my attitude in training and doesn't play for the club for three months, tell me how a player that's been warned once about being out in clubs misses training because he's in a different country in a club. Tell me why that player isn't going to get treated any differently to Jadon Sancho. And, and that's the mic drop, isn't it? And that's the challenge that United have got. And can I just say this as well? A lot of you say Eric Ten Hag out. A lot of you say Eric Ten Hag out. I have never, I've never known a manager in their first 18 months deal with so many di different issues. And, you know, again, I go back to this interview with Nicky Butt and he, he, I think he'd had a couple of drinks and I like Nicky Butt and he's going, in fairness to Marcus, he's, 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 he's surrounded by shit in that dressing room. And I'm like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Marcus Rashford cannot blame the dressing room for his drop-off in form. You know, we always talk about the mirrors and look in the mirror. And I, I don't know, it, it just seems to be, it just seems to be falling apart. It seems to be getting worse. Mads says, rash scrutiny equals managers losing dressing room reports, says uh, Mads. A great show as always. Love the show. I'll say again, Rashford has the brain of a 15-year-old boy. His decision always bites him in the backside, says Lee. I just cannot, I, I still, and people are going to go, Mark, you're being an idiot. All right, I'm probably being an idiot. And you know, I don't think I'm an idiot. But I still think there's got to be an explanation. I mean, it's Thursday night. If he's out on a Thursday night, I've seen him on a video on somebody's phone, following him into a club. And I've got pictures of him in the bar, in the club. Like, has he been given permission by the club? You know, I almost think, has he been given has he been given permission by the club? But then the club came out yesterday and said they believe he was out Wednesday night. And is it sabotage or is it player power or is it I don't give a shit? I mean, what is it? Is Ten Hag trying to get something? You know, we've been saying for weeks and months, this is not Marcus Rashford. He's not tracking back. He's not really engaged. He's not playing that well. Is there actually a flip side to this story that actually Ten Hag knows all this and he's just trying desperately to get something out of a player that doesn't want to give? You know, maybe Ten Hag knows all this and he's just, you know, trying to get something out of him. I don't get it. Um, Dan John says, apologies for last night, Mark. Uh, we want the same thing. You know, it's be great again, but how are we meant to be good if this is our supposed start player, says Dan. Uh, going out the night before training or even a match is purely unprofessional, so he needs to pay a price, as Tony. Rashford tried to pull the wool over the club eyes and the press eyes, but a lot of the time the truth comes out eventually. I'm done with him. Get out, says Jack. Well, I have to applaud The Athletic. I have to applaud The Athletic and I have to applaud Laurie Whitwell because, you know, Laurie is certainly a journalist that is within the Man United in a circle. You know, there's a few like that. James Ducker, Laurie Whitwell, Simon Stone and... You know, I, you know, I don't know Laurie personally, but I do know that he would not ever want to scrutinise or jeopardise his relationship with the club on something that wasn't credible. So say what you like about journalists around Man United, and sometimes they can be quite nauseatingly PR, but this is, a, this is an expose on United's best paid player from a journalist that I know wouldn't do it unless he was 100% sure. So, Chris Lockett, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much. Marvin says, is Ten Hag going to force him to publicly apologise like Sancho? Same standard should be applied. It has to. It has to. But you know the problem is, even I, if Rashford comes out and says I shouldn't have done it, do you take the apology or do you actually go, hold on a minute, it's not the first time. And also, you're telling me you genuinely think it's an apologisable mistake to go out training the day before in a different country. It's, it's something fundamentally wrong here. It, it, I don't think an apology is going to work anymore. I think, I think there's fundamentally something wrong. Is Marcus Rashford in a bad place mentally? It, does Marcus Rashford need a move? Does Marcus Rashford need time out? I mean, it's almost, you're looking at it and you're going, it doesn't actually make any sense. He was brilliant last season. He's been given the super contract. He's been given the star status of the club. 
Yeah, we're not doing that well this season. Yeah, he's not doing that well this season. But nobody's doing well this season. Like, you know, what is it that has unsettled the player? Has he got other things going on that, you know, I, you, you just don't know in the modern game. You just do not know. Um, are we finally opening our eyes about Rashford? Stop being afraid of him. He's not the player you think he is, says Paul. Paul Paolo, I, I'm bored of this. I'm afraid of him. I, I don't, you know, on social, on, on Twitter, apparently I hate him. On here, I'm up his arse. The reality is, it's a player I like. I want to see the good in him. I'm stunned by this. I'm disappointed by this. And I agree with a lot of what people are saying in relation to there has to be consequences because it's just not acceptable. It's damaging Manchester United. But look, I, I, I've said this a long time. I've said this for you, to you a long time. Uh, whether, whether I like it or whether you like it, it, it matters not. Um, Marcus Rashford is a brand. That's, you know, he's probably the biggest brand player in the club. That doesn't mean he's not a footballer, but he's also a brand. And, um, you know, there, there have been people over the years that are very scared of that brand. Not not us. I don't know where you think that's coming from. I mean, we've been called out by Rashford on Twitter a few months ago. And, you know, I went on Talk Sport. I went on here and I said, bullshit, we haven't done anything wrong. So I'm not scared of that brand, but some people are. You know, there are certain journalists like uh, Henry Winter who always backs Marcus Rashford. So I don't know what the relationship is there. But what I've noticed is you can be the best brand in the world. We've all seen brands fall apart because of, you know, you can you, you can lose track as a brand. You can think you're untouchable as a brand. And we've seen it. We've seen brands over the last few years that you think, well, household names, that they're, they're untouchable and it all goes to shit. Um, you know, look at the post office recently in the UK. I mean, their name is shit because of the way they've done so you're never untouchable and i've been saying for weeks now whether you, whether they want to take it on board or not i talk to united fans every single day on air and off air and the rashford brand identity at manchester united has been damaged for a long time you know you can pretty much speak to any man, uh, man united fan at the moment and they're probably i wouldn't say 50 50 yet but i think for every 10 fan you talk to three or four of them aren't really positive about Rashford at the moment. So, you know, I don't think there's wiggle room here to just, you know, I'm Marcus Rashford, the brand, and I'm sorry. I think I think it's been going wrong for a very, very long... But It's been going wrong for a very, very long time. And, I, I'm, I'm, you know, the Jurgen Klopp res resignation shocked me yesterday, but this is just... Um, this is just incredible. And, uh, look, of course, if you want him to be sold, there will be... There will be... Uh, clubs out there that want to buy him of course there will but you know at the end of the day I have to come back to recruitment I have to come back to contract renewals we've spent many years saying why did Phil Jones get a massive contract when he'd been injured for five years before it the Martial contract's embarrassing us at the moment you know we said it in the summer some of us said in the summer it, it's a bit risky giving Rashford 350k a week off one good season when the previous year had been terrible. But United, they they, they go they go all in, don't they? Um, Laurie Whitwell has said that Man United were informed that Rashford was out in Belfast on Wednesday night. However, he also attended a nightclub the following evening, hours before training. So, I mean, that's interesting. I'm reading that for the first time. So he was out on Wednesday night, but he also attended a nightclub the following evening, hours before training. I don't know what the photos relate to. Were they, you know, you know, the footage and the photos we saw last night, were they the ones from Thursday night? To be fair, there was somebody on Twitter who said he's in the same clothes um, in the club as he was in on Thursday day. Um, but look, as I said, um, there's not a lot of wiggle room here. And I said last night, if it gets proved he was out on Thursday night, I won't start denying it or defending it. Um, and when The Athletic and Laurie Whitwell are saying he was out on Thursday night, he was out on Thursday night because... If he wasn't, then um, they wouldn't put it out there. They, they just wouldn't put it out there. It's, it's as simple as that. And, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of people in the chat saying, is this arguably worse than what Jaden Sancho did? I mean, Jaden Sancho was late for training. Um, all right, the tweet was, you know, you're going to look at that in different ways. But, um, you know, Manchester United have had two weeks off. Let's not forget, we haven't played since Spurs for two weeks. Players have been to Dubai, players have been to, you know, back home and um, Marcus Rashford's had two weeks off and then the night before being back training, he's out in a nightclub in a different country. And the funny thing is, and I say it funny in the loosest sense of terms is, 
I was told three days ago that over the internet, over this inter over this mini break, Rashford's been in the gym working really, really hard. It, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You know, he's working hard doing fitness and conditioning work, but then goes out in a nightclub the night before training in a different country. It, it's just weird. It's really, really weird. Bridge, that's the end of the clip. I'm sure you enjoyed it. In fact, I bet that's the best clip you've ever watched. So there's no reason not to subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you never miss a clip again. In fact, smash a like on the video because we all know only legends like videos and you are all legends. So please smash a like on the video and uh, we will see you again on the next one. Thank you very much for watching as always.